So I just finished Final Fantasy XV. Um, the demo. The demo. Well, not the game, obviously. <laughs> not yet. Um, and I was playing it all week. I called you earlier in the week, Lynn, and I was like 10 minutes into the game, and I was like, we need to talk about this game. And I know you kind of went over it with uh, your initial thoughts video that you did. This is not going to be spoiler free. I can tell you that much <laughs> right now. Um, but I called you up on like, Wednesday morning, I was like, we need to talk about this game because it uh, blew my mind. Um, it came with, uh, packed in with Typo, which is also a great game. Um, so don't listen to all the naysayers out there. It was very nice of Square to include Typo with their Final Fantasy XV <laughs> demo. Um, but Final Fantasy XV really blew my mind, and I am really excited to talk about uh, what we experienced uh, in the game. Well, in the demo up to this point, I don't think there's anything else we can experience, but um, maybe there is. I mean, there's always the new things we discover every time we play the game, or every time you've played the game, you've discovered something new, so. Yep. So, uh, where, where do you want to start? <laughs> um, I would start with just saying the world that the demo includes is just like the perfect demo like that I've ever seen, because you get to do a little bit of everything you're ever going to do do and want to do in a Final Fantasy game and almost like it's in response to how Linear 13 was this one's just like open world just explore the open world I mean to be fair that the really throws you into a, an open field where you could totally be three hours into the game after doing three hours of being stuck in a city or something you don't yep. really know what happens before the demo picks up you know that your car is broken down um you get a little bit of information maybe on some of the things that were happening, but you really don't know where the game was when you when you picked up. No, you just know that you're four friends, you're stuck, you've got to go feed, defeat this behemoth because you need money. And it just happens to be the exact amount that you need to fix your car. <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> As um, any good Final Fantasy game would provide you with. Yes. Uh, and then you kind of just start, like facing different types of enemies and learning that certain ones are too powerful so then you've got to come back later to kind of remember where they were yeah there's really only i mean in the overworld map there's really only three enemies that you face and two of them are kind of palette swap enemies so there's the woolly mammoth enemy i don't know the name of them didn't pick it up i was i didn't really get to fight them too often um because they killed me a lot uh and then the other main enemy in the game is the one that you called the fang but is actually i think called a saber tusk and they have it looked kind of, like a fang it could have potentially have been a fang but it's not um there's a brown and a blue one the blue ones uh, even though they're they're palette swap, they look physically quite different from the brown ones. Yeah, they actually made them a bit bulkier and bigger. So, yeah, I thought the designs of the monsters, even though we had one duplicate, was really good. In fact, the detail in these monsters was to such a degree that I would have been okay if these are all the monsters I get to fight for the whole game. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty enough that it, yeah, like you would have been okay. And then there's the soldiers, obviously. I don't want to forget the soldiers as well, but... Uh, you don't see them as often. So there's a, a day-night cycle in the game, mm -hmm. which is really amazing. And you get to camp out, and that's kind of where you get your experience. And you level up and all this other stuff. And you get to eat a meal, which kind of gives you your buffs for the next day. Yeah. And, which um, are, like, super crucial. When you're first starting out, make sure that you have your buffs. Because otherwise, it's going to be really, really hard to defeat enemies. Yeah, and there's a chocobo ranch and yeah. there, uh, where you can go and buy your items, uh, eat your food, your potions, your um, antidotes, all the stuff that you need to get through the game, any, any Final Fantasy game. You can sell uh, all your loot because, you know, it's just the demo, so you're not, yeah, there's you no can, crafting element yet. So. No, and I'm sure that's going to be a big part of the game because there seems to be a lot of useless stuff that you pick up. So I'm assuming there's going to be some kind of crafting element to the game. Unless it's just giving you stuff to sell. <laughs> yeah, one or the other. Um, something I... Uh, I really love the demo. I mean, I could obviously see why people would say, even after just playing this demo, that this could potentially be the best Final Fantasy game of all time. I don't know if I would go that far yet, because this is only a three-hour demo. Uh, look, this demo was, like, the best Final Fantasy game ever. It, and that's the thing. It's, like, this demo really... <laughs> like, if really... you've played to the end, and you've done the behemoth, you've gone to the cave, like I told you to do in my initial thoughts video, then... Yeah, you, you, I don't think anyone can say that this is not 
the at least best a really Final good Fantasy. attempt. At least a really good attempt at, at modernizing the franchise. Yes, actually, it's like the perfect modernization because that's what a lot of her complaints was with thirteen is that by the time it was released, it was behind. It felt so behind everything else. But really this did. one actually, like, and I think thirteen's underrated. Like, I, mm-hmm. I don't. We even, both like thirteen. I think thirteen's a great game, but thirteen. Like, just already felt so dated because it was already so far behind everything else. Yeah, for gameplay. Like, the battle system was amazing. It took them three games to get there, but they eventually did create an amazing traditional uh, ATB gauge uh, system. But I felt like for this one, for being an action game, like, I almost... Like, it was so well done, I didn't miss the turn-based battles. No, and and it felt uh, organic enough. It kind of felt similar to 12, but also kind of different. Like, it felt very organic, I guess is the yeah. best way to say it. Um, what a lot of people are going to say is, like, because um, I know people will nitpick on, like, oh, uh, you know, quick time events, and oh, mm-hmm. they're copying this from that and the other thing. What people have to realize is that a lot of exploration in video games in, in the modern era in general was influenced by Final Fantasy. Um, so a lot of people are going to look at this and say, oh, what is it doing different from Uncharted or whatever? But I think what a lot of people don't realize is that sense of exploration and everything that you get from those gaming experiences comes from the roots of Final Fantasy. It's just they adapt it and, and did it better. Now Final Fantasy is finally catching on and giving you that experience instead of the more traditional experience of like showing you what you're going to see or what you're going to get and knowing what's ahead of the next turn. Whereas in this game, it's a lot more natural exploration where you just yeah, randomly yeah. find items and places. And it's still like a final, like, you know, if you go off the beaten path, you're going to find a treasure item mm-hmm. because Final Fantasy has taught yeah. people to do that. Right. Yes, yes. And, it, but it also, you know, really allows for a lot of exploration. And I think that's going to lead into our talk about the cave, which is, the second best part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, in, if you go to my initial video, initial thoughts video, you can see, like, I've actually directed how to, like, or actually, it's not the initial thoughts video, sorry. It's the what you need to know before playing. So I have two videos. Um, go to that one. And I actually show on the map what, like, where the cave is and when to go to it. So, because that's, like, super critical that you go there at the right time to get the best possible version of this game to play so once you do get to the cave make sure you're about a level 18 or so that way you're not worrying about dying all the time and having to go back through the cave um but when you get there i was surprised when i first played it i just stumbled upon the cave and i was like "Ooh, a cave um and i didn't expect it to be like what it was like you just start fighting goblins which is where i was saying that the the monsters are so detailed that it's incredible. Like, the goblins... Um, I love the goblins. I, really I just was, I was like, when I saw the goblins the first time where they just kind of jump out of nowhere and they look really legitimately very terrifying mm-hmm. and they look like they would smell and they have the glowy eyes and they have the... Like... And then they did, like, they wind up for the goblin punch. Like, you can see them winding up to... And, it, like, that just blew my mind. I was mm-hmm. like, what am I seeing? Like, I couldn't wrap my head around. That was, like, just the first encounter in the cave that I had with the goblins. Yes, the goblin encounters get, like, really amazing because they Very pour... Very intense. Like, they pour Very out intense. of parts. Like, you, you can even stumble upon them at, like, a fire. Yeah. And you just, like, you almost, like, spring up on them and they're like, oh, my goodness. And, like, there's so many little details. Like, their clothes... Are like, like you you told me before that they're like they look like they just went out and like stole like some yeah. rags and like you know Put shambled them, together yeah. some clothes. Yeah. And they're so like I love how the even the mechanics for them work. Like battling the goblins was a lot of fun because there's the one that's always throwing goblin punch at your party and knocking you back. Then there's also one who's always standing off at the kind of edge of the battle firing magic balls into your group, and it's like. You notice today, it, like, cackles yeah, when it throws I, the magic ball. Well, yeah, I don't even know what happened, but, like, he was, like, he hit me, and, and he, I think he was, like, throwing some magic, and he, like, ran away and cackled. Like, I was, like, that is such a, an amazing detail. Like, because I think when we're talking about the cave, this was a point I really wanted to hit, and it, and it, it, it combines with the goblins as well, is, like, 
I, I've been a Final Fantasy fan dating back as far as I can remember, honestly, at least till Final Fantasy VII, and because yeah. uh, I didn't have an any uh, SNES um, to play the other uh, 16-bit games on, but obviously I've gone back and played all of those as well. Uh, but I've I've been a fan of the series since Final Fantasy VII, and I've known about it since Final Fantasy II came out on the uh, SNES. If I if I'm giving away my age there, <laughs> um, but I I've always been a huge fan of the series. I know. Um, you know, maybe not as much as other people might know about it, but I still really appreciate the details that each of the games have for certain aspects. But this game really uh, takes it to the next level because even in a very graphically impressive game like Final Fantasy IX, where you are doing dungeons and you're doing side quests and you're doing all of these things, um, there's still that isometric view where the game gives you enough of a sense of adventure because you can go off the path and find your items, mm -hmm. but you still kind of know what is ahead. You know what the path is, where it's going to take you. Yeah. In this game, if you don't want to look at your map, if you, if you, uh, get yourself turned around, you can get lost in this cave. Yeah. And you literally do not know what's around the next turn. It could be goblins, it could <laughs> be bats, it could be, you know, a beautifully lit area with like stalagmites and stalactites everywhere and like it literally just reminded me of like the imagination that I had when I play the 8-bit or the 16-bit games mm -hmm. when I see these caves this is what I was seeing in my mind when I see yeah. these goblins this is how in my imagination I kind of put together their their actions and their behavior and what they would look like three-dimensionally exactly and and some of these things people would say oh the game's just now you don't have to imagine looking at it now it's showing you what it looks like but I think the other argument is for somebody who's played it as long as I have it's like Yes, it's showing you, but that's what's great about it. Because now yeah. it's kind of confirming the the, the, the imagination, imagination you, you had, had as a kid viewing all this stuff. Like, I even played, like, even 5 recently, and I cannot begin to imagine 5 in with this type of gameplay. Because, like, there's some gut-wrenching scenes that, like, fully rendered would be... Like, I teared up anyway. I think <laughs> I would, like, lose my mind. I think I'd be like, I'm not playing this game anymore. It's stupid. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing is, like, it really adds to the intensity and the storytelling and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. that cave experience, and when you get to the end of the cave, is and the reward you get for doing that is, yeah. is all very amazing. Yeah, it's really, really cinematic, like, crawling through, like, crevices. shimmying through crevices and, like, crawling under. And there's, like, this amazing part uh, where the goblins, like, are coming out the crevice that you're trying to go through, and, like, you just see them in your face, and, like, a bunch are crawling past you, and you're like, oh my goodness! <laughs> like, it's, it's really impressive, because I don't think any other Final, Final Fantasy has come close to the experience just in the cave, um, let alone, like, what happens after. So once you... You do, is that good for the cave? I think that. I think okay. good for the cave. I mean, I love the cave. I could talk about oh, yeah, the no, cave we, all That's day. what I mean, like, can we... <laughs> Yeah, we could. Um, so once you go from the cave, it's best to go, like, save at your camp so you can get your levels, and then go fight, or go finish the behemoth quest. I didn't know what to expect facing the behemoth. I figured it was going to be a normal battle, where it's like, oh, you go in, you know, you go around this corner, and there's the behemoth, and you fight it. Um, that's not what happened. <laughs> you no. are suddenly following the behemoth, and you're like, oh, this is a little bit different, so you're following... Suddenly turns into a Metal Gear Solid-type sneaking mission. <laughs> yes, which was so much fun. I was like, oh, this is great. And there's... You got caught, but I didn't. I've been playing enough Metal Gear Solid in my life. I know, I the first time caught. I played it when we were sneaking through the fog, yeah, I definitely... It was like, oh, you fell too far behind, and I was mm. like, but I didn't want to get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and there's just really, like, I thought they really captured the cinematicness of modern gaming in like the perfect Final Fantasy way where the behemoth like you assume the behemoth is big but you never get a sense of scope from big enemies like even the best one I can think of for myself personal experience is in nine when you're in the desert and you have to fight that like giant I don't even know what it is it's some sort of big the sandworms no it's like he's like super big I don't know he's some sort of goblin -y thing Anyway, he's the only one where I was like, you know, they've got a ton of HP, they've got magic, so you're like, oh my goodness, facing this giant thing is tough. But it was never an experience where leading up to fighting the monster, you don't want to fight it. Like, no, you, like yeah. the cinematic scene is such that, like, 
you literally are so afraid of this big thing. Like, you're like, how are we going to beat this? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, I've seen us fight things, but I, like, we've even taken down, like, large uh, herbivores, but I have no yeah. idea how we're going to beat this behemoth. Like, it's not possible. Because at that point, too, I did not realize what we got in the cave, which was the, a summon. And I didn't, like, follow the dialogue well enough to notice that that's what it was. Um, I just read something about, like, not getting XP, and I was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so I had no idea how I was going to beat this behemoth. I was like, this is, like, impossible. So you f- keep following, you keep sneaking, then your team formulates a plan to beat it, and you're like, oh, okay, so this is how we're going to beat it. You, you know, you have to do that really intense scene, so you have to, like, zip back from the behemoth to, like, draw it back um, using your warp towards ability. Your party. Towards your party. And then they attack it and there's an explosion it catches on fire and you know you attack it and then you think it's dead and it's not dead and then oh my goodness that only took away like 10 percent of his hp (laughs) well how the frig are we going to beat this so suddenly you're trying to stay in its blind spot and you're like getting a couple attacks in you're backing off you're getting a couple attacks in but you're like there's no way like suddenly then i'm like um pinned against something and i'm like i'm dead like and then i gotta do this whole cutscene again like what is gonna happen and then all of a sudden there's like sparkles and it's like press x to summon and i was like <laughs> yeah and x x <laughs> yeah holding x and then all of a sudden lightning and i'm like wait there was lightning in the cave and then <gasps> and you're like oh my god it there was a hand and then you know you know exactly who it is yeah you're like i recognize this summon from all the early games and it's it's uh we're moving. Yes. Yeah, it's in that, like, when I saw it, because I played that part of the game here, because you wanted me to see that. <laughs> I wanted, wanted to see to your expression it. to and that summon. I just lost my mind. Like, it reminded me of the first time I saw a summon in, like, Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VIII or Final Fantasy IX. Like, I, I always appreciated, I know that they maybe went too far and, like, you know, summons would take 20 minutes eventually and... And I know that some people thought, like, they went too far. But I always appreciated the detail that went into the summons, especially in the later uh, games in the series. And this just blew my... Like, to actually see him there and, like, grab you and get the sense of size. And then, like, he uses Judgment Bolt, which just, like, blew my... And, like, the ground, like, lights up and, like, there's fire after the lightning bolt strikes. And then you can even, like, look at him as he, like, fades away. Yeah, so this behemoth with Jubin... Oh, man, I don't, like, I, sorry. <laughs> Just had to... Yeah. Yes. So this behemoth with Jubin so afraid of and so, like, he's, you know, he's come pounding down on you and you think you're going to die is just, like, 99 damage, dead, literally cindering body on the ground, and you're like, the sense of power was insane. Like, I immediately... Like, didn't even know what I was doing. I just ran out and I was like, I need to die again. <laughs> yeah. So I can, like, so see can this over again, and over and, and over again, again because and again, I was like... And again. <laughs> wow. Like, this was, like, as awesome as, like, I'm a big fan of 10 summons. I think they have a lot of character and they're very quirky. And there's just so much personality in those summons. But this game, like, just this one summon is a more epic an intense summon and just empowering than any summon that and comes before the music, it. music, which is like, you know, Oh, it's all operatic, of some kind, and, and you're then, like, oh. Yeah, it was amazing. And then we got to the end of the game, which made me really sad, but we did get to see Sid, or <laughs> Sydney. Sydney, but it's obviously Sid, and um, <laughs> for some people, I already know that she's right up there in the top rankings of hot Final Fantasy chicks, but... Yeah, uh, she's like somewhere like... People are going to be like, who, Riku or Sydney? And I'm like, I kind of like, because Sid's a girl, that kind of like is special. That's so. very special. I think And then she's like the good. mechanic and she's like, I love her because she's not, um, like even though she's dressed like scantily, she like shoots down your t- your group like at oh, any turn. At any turn. Like they're like, ooh, next time we're not going to come back just, you know, for our car breaking down. She's like, yeah, come back and I'll tune it up anytime. Yeah. Like just all like, and just turns away and they're just like. No, <laughs> yeah, they try at least. <laughs> Anyway, uh, man, I think we have to end this because I think I'm just going to talk about it all day. It's an amazing, amazing demo. I hope that other people enjoyed it as much as we did. Um, it's worth it just for Typo alone, which I also think is a great game. And I know people are going to probably talk very negatively about that game because it's a darker story or because 
you know, of all the other Final Fantasy tropes that are going to be present in every Final Fantasy game. Yeah. You might as well just accept it at this point for what it is. But I think that Final Fantasy typo is a nice bonus to have <laughs> for our three hour <laughs> I demo. would have paid that full price just for this, like, demo. Because when I played it, uh, it took me, like, four and a half hours. And then when I played it again to get you to where you need to be, it was, like, I played for, like, three and a half hours. And I could have stayed and played, like, longer. I just had to, like, eventually stop. Uh, and, like, we discovered at, like, the very last second there was, like, another quest. And we were, like... <laughs> well, we gotta we gotta wrap this up and record this video at some yeah, point. Yeah, there's chocobos in the forest, which is great. Oh yeah, the black chocobos. There's black chocobos. Oh, and... and remember to do yourself a favor. And if you have picked English because you're you know you just think well I'm in North America I pick English, uh, I recommend picking the Japanese and then just going into the settings later and putting on the subtitles because the Japanese voice acting is like way 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 better even though the english for this game so far i was pretty i'm playing in english i think so that i could kind of talk about it a little bit but all i really have to add is that the english is not bad but i agree that the japanese the japanese is exceptionally better it just matches all the lip movements and like it just sounds better in the fights and everything sounds more natural yeah it does sound a lot more natural and i feel like what i like about the japanese is it it fits the impactfulness of the scenes i think a lot better and we're going to talk about that in Typo, because... <laughs> typo, you do not want to play <laughs> You do not want to play that. <laughs> you do not want to play that game in English. It's right. perfectly fine if you don't play it in English. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then maybe, that, maybe that's anyway. why some people don't like it. <laughs> I, I think that is a... I'm going to get into that in our Typo video, but that is 100% why I think people don't like it. All right, so I think it's going to be a couple weeks before we review Typo, because I don't think either of us are really far enough in the game. It's pretty long, obviously. No. It's got a full quest of 40 hours versus three hours yeah um and i think we're really just i don't i know i'm definitely just getting into the mechanics i don't, of I the don't game, think so. i've done the tutorials for everything yet <laughs> like i think i feel like there's tutorials still yet to come so there's still things to learn yeah. and i think the story is you know again full of final fantasy tropes full of cliches and we know it's going to get complicated at some point and we know we're going to miss that point and people are going to be upset that we didn't talk about it, so <laughs> Okay, well, so Final Fantasy XV was amazing. It's, uh, I think it's everything that I've looked for in a modern Final Fantasy. Um, yeah, if you play Bravely Default, you'll get your fix for Final Fantasy, the early Final Fantasies, and if you play this, you'll get your fix for modern Final Fantasies, and then you'll just, it'll, you'll just be like, I need the full game. <laughs> yeah, well, that's in, the thing is, too, is you want the full game and you know it's going to be a while because it's Final Fantasy, it's Square Enix. We know these things are going to take forever. It's but like a Metal Gear game. It's, it's like not delays, even, delays, delays. Yeah, but it's <laughs> not even that I didn't enjoy 13 or I didn't enjoy 12. I didn't enjoy 12 initially because I was like, oh, why I is didn't this not either. turn-based? I was like, <laughs> what happened to my <laughs> gauges and my turn-based? And all? I got so lost like immediately. As soon as you start that game up, I was like, but I don't like, know where to go. I just finished or just got to the halfway point in 12 a uh, couple months back and like 12 is such an eye-opening experience when you go back with a more open mind and 13 in general is an underrated final fantasy game that i think people are too hard on because it takes too long to get into the story of the game yeah um but the reason i say that is because 15 despite me liking 12 despite me liking 13 despite me liking 10 which some people also don't like somehow apparently but, you know, to each their own, right, in terms of Final Fantasy. I know people are going to have their favorites. But for me, even liking or appreciating or respecting those games, this game blew me away. Like mm-hmm. This game I can see being the best game in the series or, or up there in the upper echelon of great Final I think Fantasies. it's going to be the best overall. I mean, for ten, like, what a lot of people liked is it had a really great story. Like, it had... You connected so much with those characters. Even though it was cliched, the story still somehow made some kind of sense for a Final yeah. Fantasy game. I mean, as much sense as any Final Fantasy game is ever going to make, so. Yes. No, nobody came from orphanages randomly, so that's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, 10 out of 10 uh, for the demo, for sure. Oh, yeah. You guys will love it. I hope you guys like it. Yeah, and let us know in the comments any thoughts that you guys had about the demo and things that you maybe came across that we didn't discuss. And we'll see you in the Type O review. Awesome.